Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mythic Dungeon International's Spring Finals, live from Sydney, Australia. I'm Jack, and joining me for all the action from the best of the West and East, we've got Sloot, Nagura, and Sours here. And guys, not only are we playing for that $100,000 prize pool, but the top two teams are going to be going to BlizzCon. Securing those top two spots is vitally important. $100,000 is going to be the top prize pool with $50,000 alone for that first place spot here. We've seen a bunch of teams from all corners of the world coming in, vying for those spots and that big prize money. And at this point, we have to have kind of all eyes here, Sours, on that Method EU team coming in that first place spot. Yeah, this is definitely the team that everyone is the most afraid of. Method EU is the only team that w didn't drop a single series across any of the cups. And, you know, like everyone's like, oh my God, their times are so crazy. If we want to play against Method EU, we've got to design our strategies around this team. And, you know, we could probably beat another team with a, a lighter route, less aggressive, but against Method Method EU, we've got to go really balls to the wall. They really will have to there, as Method EU is the number one seed going into it from the West and number one overall. We are seeing Battle for Champion, the number one seed from the East, was unfortunately unable to make it uh, due it at the last minute. So we had full screen coming in, filling in their spot, and also the seeding so that we didn't have to change around the practice regimen for any of the other players here. But Method EU at that top spot going up against Black Mamba, which will be the first matchup of the day here. And one of the most interesting things when we got to talk to those players, Nagura, is Black Mamba didn't seem to be shying away from practicing and getting ready for them. Yeah, we definitely talked about Method EU being this favorite team, the best team that is here and just the favorite to win even. And a lot of other teams in the past in the Western Cups said that they are not really going to practice uh, against the maps versus Method EU because they just kind of assume they're not going to be good enough. So they just focused on the lower bracket and the maps on the lower bracket. But Black Mamba just said that they practiced a lot for the first match against Method EU. So we'll see what they do against them. I mean, it's just a different mentality here, right? We talked about this so many times throughout the season. Some teams are just happy making that land spot. But the thing is, we're at the land now. These teams are here to win, and they have to take their opponents head on. Black Mamba, I mean, they certainly have their work cut out for them, but they did not shy away from this matchup when we talked to them yesterday. Yeah, without a doubt. And one important thing to note for this tournament is unlike the regional cups, you are going to be having unlimited character swaps instead of the, the one per dungeon here. So teams will be able to switch around as much as they'd like from dungeon to dungeon. They can switch even from all the way horde to all the way alliance and back and forth as they want to sours. So and we saw a little bit of plans, not too heavy, not a big upswell of change for it, but some plans here to shake it up. Yeah, I don't expect too much change uh, from the cups with uh, unlimited swaps. Definitely you expect to see a lot of swaps off of Night Elf to Dwarf. It'll be a lot easier to change to uh, min-max your race as much as possible. However, we do know that there are a couple of people who have some more interesting classes that they have actually prepared very specific strategies for very specific dungeons. So we do want to be looking out for that when those come up. Yeah, without question. We saw it a little bit when we had our interviews with players where they were kind of bringing up how time trials was that unlimited swap region that they'd be able to do. But one thing we haven't really seen in time trials and at all in the tournaments has been Siege of Aralis here, which is also getting added into the prize or into the uh, player pool, Nagura. Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see a Siege of Veralis because it's the first time we're going to see it at all. In the Cups, there was no Siege at all. And not only that, but it's also Alliance and the Horde start in a different area. And there's some mobs that are also doing different things. So we'll see how the teams are going to do for that. And also, like when it comes to times, all of the teams kind of said they don't know if their strategy is good enough or not because they just don't have any other times to compare their own times to. Yeah, and so many times we've been able to have access to those time trials or everybody is able to see from the streams and kind of build up from the different maps as to how the other players are going to be doing it. But we don't know there. But the first map of the day is going to the first match of the day is going to be between Method EU and Black Mamba, followed up by Team D and Abra Kidabra, full screened in 40K, going up a little bit later, then Method NA and Buff War Nerf Rogue. If any of the teams lose today, they will be done for the day. They'll be all set, and we'll be seeing them more tomorrow. We'll have two upper semis to finish out our day, making it so that we're having four elimination games tomorrow, Salute. And we're going to see which team is going to qualify for the grand finals and for BlizzCon. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of heat on tomorrow. But, you know, we talked to a lot of the teams, and, and they're really kind of relieved at this three-day format right now, being able to go in and, uh, you know, size up their opponent, essentially. Some obviously will be dropping to that lower bracket, but then they have the night to kind of recoup, get some practice in before the second day tomorrow. And then at that point, I mean, yeah, a lot of people are unfortunately going to be uh, sitting in the stands and cheering their fellows on for the remainder of the tournament. Yeah, Nagura, you mentioned how Black Mamba wasn't really shying away from getting well-practiced for these dungeons here because, like we mentioned, if 
they were ever to lose today. They have all of today and then the morning tomorrow to be able to start practicing for round two. Yeah, maybe that's one of the main reasons why they they just chose to practice a lot for method use map as well, because if they lose, they do have so much time, as you mentioned, to practice for the rest of the map. So maybe they figured might as well just practice against method U as well, not just give up straight away. Without a doubt, and we have a Tall Dazar as our first matchup here, Sours. And we did switch up the affixes from the cup play, so we're going to be having Tyrannical, Raging, and Grievous here. Doesn't seem like we're going to have too many, much issue with Grievous in particular, but Raging can be pretty nasty on some of these larger pulls. Yeah, we'll have to see how teams decide to move through the dungeon here. I know that a lot of teams have talked that they want to go through the left and kill some Colossi, so we'll see if they end up seeing some uh, interesting route changes here. I think that route may be a lot faster, but as you can see, the class has don't really change up that much between the cups and the uh, land because the meta is pretty pretty solved right now i think and th these classes are the best for a reason without a question and as we start up game number one between method eu and black mamba if you'd like to place your vote right now in chat be sure to use hashtag meu or hashtag bm in chat to place your vote as we go into game one on it's all bizarre and here we are in beautiful sydney australia getting ready for the first match of the land here immediately we see method eu going out the left side black mamba follow suit as well typically what we'll see here of course is that large pull coming in mass pull coming in from mass a method eu that bloodlust will usually be popped but they could be a bit stingy and save it for the bosses in this tyrannical environment we see both of the rest of the of course jumping onto his latch as you can see on the left now we see a uh, nips on a uh, black mamba side actually uses that tree of life which uh, we haven't seen Celia pop yet so maybe not running this tree of life at all now we see uh, also not the confessors being pulled at all on the black mamba side at least not the patrolling confessor we saw the raster drop very very low up but he did recover and he did manage to dispel himself well uh, method use has already done with their pull here but black mamba falling suit they just finished up as well method eu actually going up the side towards the colossus pull right now it doesn't look like they actually want to engage the pull is now runs in grabs the pack to the side and the rest of the group safely runs up double sap of course that true cc coming in from the two rogues azalean now follows suit moving in safely into priestess alunzi's room getting ready for what will likely be a mass pull here typical snapping coming in from black mamba on the right side of the screen here with the swords making sure that they don't jump around huge pull here for method eu as bloodlust goes off the entire pack is pulled in front of the boss including priestess alunza this is such an important pull for method eu here as they have all the trash they all also going to get reaping on top of this boss here as they pull the boss as well now the problem with this pool is that you have the priestesses from the trash who drop these pools on the ground but the pools don't actually work for the boss's mechanic the transfusion so you need to make sure that you actually use the boss's pools and not the priestesses pools but the method you're doing a really good job as the transfusion goes out everyone took the right pools they also managed to see the spirit of gold and they did get the reaping as well yeah, so the reaping is being cleaved here for Method EU. 34% on the board for Trash. Black Mamba, 23%, of course, going a more traditional route down to Razan and cleaving that first round of reaping along with that tyrannical boss. Both teams doing an excellent job with the mechanics, as is expected at this high caliber play tournament right now, making sure not to get caught by Razan or, of course, shadow melding or vanishing that uh, chase off should the players get targeted. Nice to hear from observers as Method EU cleans up the rest of this first reaping pack. Zelia just on the side, getting ready to dip into that pool as needed, and we can see Priestess Alunza getting that 25% chunking damage worth as the players make sure to reflect her self heal with the blood pools here. Yeah, this is a very interesting route coming out of Method U. We haven't seen this at all from any of the teams before in the Cups. We've seen something similar from uh, 40k, but they actually chose to kill the Colossi. So uh, Method U is choosing to skip the trash, but still go the same route where you go to Priestess first. Now we've talked to Method U and they just kind of explained to us that they're doing this route because this is a lot less backtracking and this is just better reaping timings for them. So this is why they chose this route here. They also got the Bloodlust off immediately for this big pool. We've seen so many teams just save the Bloodlust for a long time for this exact pool and Method U just doesn't have to uh, save it for that long because they just go there straight away. So expectation of course for Method EU here will be that they'll likely proc their second reaping and then jump down to Razan so they have to make sure to get a uh, like likable patrol here as we see the tricks of the trade coming out of the rogues here redirecting all their threat to now who's already pre-positioned with his snap on the side. Mir's unfortunately eating the brunt of the damage from some of the swords coming in right now as the second reaping pack does now spawn for Method EU. Black Mamba 35% still on Razan so they're still chewing through that high health tyrannical boss. Method EU now dealing with a lot of the rage mobs here to snap since the swords don't jump there is a lot of danger on pressure on that tank with the damage 
Yeah, so they're jumping down now as they're down with the trash to engage Ristan. No one fell off. It was all on purpose, of course. Now, one thing, of course, you have to note here is the Grievous. Since they didn't actually get out of combat, we saw the cheap death brought from Jinji here as well. Because the, the falling damage plus the Grievous taking on the people. And you probably also get a swing from the box here as well. But uh, they are about to recover here as well as healing away the Grievous ticks. Now, with Ristan, there's a lot of tank damage. So you definitely got to watch out for that as well. Yeah, of course, there's that debuff that goes out that uh, gives you a bleed and increased physical damage taken. So a bit dangerous, especially if you spawn a lot of these reanimated raptors plus the skyscrapers at the top that we did see Zayla run up and pull. It is marked with an X for Method EU, making sure that the terrifying screech is interrupting. Well done so there by the team. Otherwise, the entire group will be AOE feared. That comes up every 15 seconds, so one melee can uh, very easily handle that. Rizan here, 3%, finally about to fawn out for Black Tom, but, you know... Nagar, we talk about this dungeon a lot. It's a very open dungeon. It's always kind of hard to gauge how the two teams are versus each other. But Black Mamba has only now killed the first boss. Razan is at 66% for Method EU. And they've already killed Princess Alunza along with 53% of the trash. I got to say, Method EU is probably a fair bit ahead right now. Yeah, I do want to say that Razan definitely is a boss that has a lot more HP and takes a lot longer than Princess Alunza because she just kind of, uh, you know, she damages herself with the transfusion cast. So uh, Princess Alunza definitely takes a lot less time than Razan. But Method EU does not have the bloodless available to them here on Rizan, while Black Mamba did use theirs. And it seems like Method EU just has so much single target damage, as Rizan seems to be dying a lot faster for them than it did for Black Mamba. Yeah, but it's still certainly taking a while. They're doing really well here to make sure that Rizan is kept in place for as long as possible, at least. Pursuit does finally go out on now, the furthest target from the boss, who just runs away, and I believe uh, did not have a Shadow Melt, so he's just kiting the boss as... Uh, little as possible so that they can return to the corner. I think they might actually do a full side swap here in order to have access to the five swords just above them for when the boss uh, does finally die. In fact, they're actually going for it right away. As you see Zayla get in cheetah form, run up there and grab all of the swords down on top of the pack. You know, that splash damage, especially with Enraging, could actually be a bit dangerous on the group, depending what else is happening for Rizan. Yeah, he was definitely a very dangerous app because that with the swords coming up, because uh, the, not only is it the damage that you have to deal away from the swords jumping, but you also just has Grievous on everybody. Now, Rastadrude uh, can heal the Grievous. Rastadrude, of course, a very good healer as everyone's playing it. But uh, still, the sword damage plus boss damage on the tank plus the Grievous, it is a difficult job for the healer here. But the Sailor doing a good job as Rizan is already on 9%. So they are, they they're about to down Rizan, and they're also about to proc their 60% reaping wave here. Yeah, so that should be the 60% soon. Black Mamba, of course, not to be forgotten, is already working on Volcal, and it looks like they actually had a bit of trouble with their first uh, phase here. You do have to kill all of those reanimation totems at the same time, so I didn't actually take a sneak peek whether they just left one at the end and are cleaving it down, or one did heal, but you can see there the two are quite low. Now they're just working down on it. Their second uh, round of reaping has joined them now. Now, girl, you know I talked about uh, this in the past. Not really the most efficient to proc that reaping on top of Volcal phase one. You don't really get a lot of effective cleave as the boss just self heals non-stop until you get those totems down nonetheless they have decided otherwise have down the second pack of reaping and are finally entering their second phase on vocal as method has moved upstairs above razan's pit right now and has done a massive uh, snap here not only with the swords and sky screamers on the side but also the dinosaurs in the middle of the room yeah this was a pretty significant pull by method you as they uh, saw their rogues had tricks of the trade on uh now they redirected all the aggro so they went over pulled the middle and uh, they all snapped to the tank's location on this ledge here and they're just dealing with all the middle area trash which gives so much percentage especially uh, worth it on a non-45 dungeon as this one here is yeah and you know important to note actually what's really key about this is the, part of the reason you don't pull that center pack is it does give a lot of percent but the dinosaurs constantly charge in every direction you can see this frenzied charge being cast here non-stop by one of those uh, uh one of those triceratops essentially and they have nowhere to go because they're snapped in this location so everybody could just sit there effectively cleaving them all the way down finally getting most of it down as they hit 69 percent on trash black mamba dealing with volcal still 30 percent on the board for them of course we do know most teams don't use their bloodlust on this as the boss does have that aura that damages the players but also the boss themselves getting a bit out of hand with healing here though as the the um grievous stacks are starting to ramp up on the group right now and just a lot of trouble coming in for the rest of dread right now enemies is just not able to heal everyone down and the rogues are just ticking down lower and lower force stacks left and right as we have a cheat death proc for one of the rogues hank's about to proc as well and he's just not able to hold on the damage but volcal is about to fall and immediately right. those fish feasts wow. are going to go down but they have proc their fourth reaping here for method eu now that was so close for black mamba i've just seen the 
the Grievous stack, just to stack up on each member. And it's not, if you're far behind on the Grievous and you have four stacks on everybody, on top of having AoE damage from the boss, it's just so hard as the rest of it to come back if you don't have something like Tranquility ready. But they did manage to kill the boss and recover, and now they're onto the next pack. Now, at this point, Method Viewers is so far ahead. They are 86% trash versus 40%, and they are 2-2 two two bosses. Now, the bosses that are left alive for both of them are different, as Priest Saloons are still alive for uh, Black Mamba, and for Method U it's Volcal. So it's a little bit different there, but the trash is like double the amount of trash for Method U at this point. Yeah, that's really the thing to watch out for here. I mean, Black Mamba has to do a massive pull to try and catch up on the amount of trash that they're behind for Method U. And not just the trash anger, but on top of it, two rounds of reaping. I mean, they, they certainly have their work cut out for them as Method U is just gonna glide on up to Volcal and get started here in a moment. We can see Wong jump over on the side, getting ready to get all of the swords and the Sky Screamers snap over to him as they do well to interrupt, of course, that terrifying screech. In go Method EU into Volcal's room, getting ready to down the second last boss of the dungeon. Yeah, Method EU on Volcal here, they are 98%, so they only need uh, one more mob, most likely, to get that reaping, which can be done with a Sky Screamer at the very end, which we've usually seen in the past. Now, if you look at the final time, it's not even 10 minutes into the dungeon, and Method EU only has two bosses left to kill for them, basically. So Method EU definitely a very, very fast run in their Atal here, as they're working on phase one of this... Uh, uh, Volcal 5. Well, Black Mamba still has to do a lot of trash. We see also some snapping from uh, Black Mamba on the other side. Yeah, so snapping right before that kind of a fire bridge gauntlet, or fire stair gauntlet, if you will, leading up to Priestess. So the first phase about to go down here for Method EU, as they, of course, leave that last 2% worth of trash. They don't want to deal with the last wave of reaping, but a couple of four stacks here in the DPS. Azalea is having just a bit of trouble catching up, and finally the aura from phase 2 of Volcal is starting to apply to the group, so Azalea is starting to change gear here and play a bit more defensive, making sure everybody's healed above that 90% threshold, getting rid of those Grievous stacks that we saw be almost disastrous for Black Mamba earlier. Yeah, you definitely do not want to fall behind with the healing here in this fight, or in any fight, if it's the Grievous Apex, because as soon as you have four stacks on everybody, it's just so hard to get back from that. But we see Salia just making sure hots are on everybody. You see the four cents, the green healing zone dropped in the floor. Everyone is standing in it, making sure to get the passive healing from that. And then we see Salia just going in and out of cat form to make sure he maximizes his DPS as well, as he's up to 80, uh, 8k DPS on his Residuid. Yeah, we do know Zalia is a, a huge fan and a very offensive player. Player. He likes to just take advantage of that kitty DPS as much as he can in these situations and keeping the group at just bare minimal amount of healing. And you know, we talked when we talked with Method U, it wasn't even he trusts his team so much and they plan around their defensive CDs as well so that he can damage. So the group's play with their defensives is planned around that, allowing him to get that extra damage. And Black Mamba about to proc their fourth round of reaping here right in front of Princess Alunza, Alunza dealing with that massive pull that Method U earlier had combined with them. Volcal does fall here for Method U as they start to rush down. Shroud comes up immediately, and they get ready to go to Yasma, the final boss of the dungeon. Yeah, the double Shroud just coming out here from Method U. One Shroud to skip to Volcal, and the other Shroud to go back uh, away from Volcal to skip this trash twice. So definitely making use of the double rope set up here as they're on their way to the last boss. Now, they're most likely going to pull one of the Sky Screamers, making sure that it runs up to the boss fight, and then it's just going to get seceded in a corner by either Salia with Hibernate or by uh, the Monk. So they're probably just going to kill with it, uh, kill it at the very end of the boss fight so they don't have to deal with the 100% reaping wave, of course. And we finally have our first death of the tournament as a Shin goes down for Black Mamba. The battle res does immediately come up as Priestess and Lunza is pulled for Black Mamba, but Method U well ahead now as they pull Yasma, the final boss of the dungeon. Now, on Tyrannical, this boss can be pretty scary and you can start to run out of space quite quickly with the spiders should you choose to soak them. Most teams don't do that, however. They kite them around in a circle and make sure that they are close to the boss behind and nobody is in danger. So with this all melee comp, they drop the images closely behind the boss, but there could be a bit of bad luck sometimes, Nagura, and they could have the spiders kind of fixate and spawn on them as they're trying to go and drop the group off. Yeah, it's definitely a, kind of a difficult fight on Tyrannical, especially because it just lasts so long. It has so much HP, it takes forever. And this is why the route of Method U is also very impressive, because they just have their Bloodlust back up exactly for this fight. So they had it for the difficult pull with Priestess Alunes at the start, and they have it again for this uh, Yasma fight here at the very end. So definitely a very good route coming out from Method U here as they're on the last boss. And as you mentioned, there's some difficult moments here, especially with, with the, the Soul Rend, as you can see, come out right now. Now, they dropped their images very close to the boss to min-max their DPS, because the closer you drop them, you can still damage the boss while cleaving them down, 
uh, passively. So very well done here by Method EU. A resident spider boss here should have kept their job as a web designer as now. Does chunk just a bit low there from the Ren, but does manage to stabilize as Zayla just pumps a bit of healing over time into him, getting above that 90% threshold right now. Yasma falling rapidly here, 44% on the board as Priestess Alunza only now about to fall for Black Mamba, who then needs to double over and head all the way back to, uh, to Yasma. So anything short of a full wipe here, Method EU should have this first game in the bag. Yeah, so interesting to see that they already uh, chose to engage the Sky Screamer now when Yasma is still on 40%. I assume it's to maximize the cleave damage and just uh, get more damage on the boss, but uh, it is kind of difficult to to deal with the Sky Screamer on top of all the boss's mechanics because the Sky Screamer needs to be interrupted, the boss needs to be interrupted, and if you have a Soul Rent on top of it and you're out of range for your interrupt, then it might be a problem, but it really shouldn't be for these kind of things, especially for Method U as they're doing a really good job throughout this dungeon. Zero deaths, very clean run so far. The Sky Screamer going down so the reaping wave is going to come yeah the reaping is a wave is going to come right now and uh procced as well by black mamba that decided to just shadow meld it off and run up to yasma yasma though about to hit the single digits of percent health left as they spawn one last rend in the corner a few risen souls have joined the pack but shouldn't really be trouble for the team as they will just cleave them down passively and really they don't need to kill them because as soon as this boss dies in five percent from now method eu will claim the first game in the series against Black Mamba, leading the series 1-0. Uh, nothing but an expected dominant performance coming out of Method EU to start this up. That's Method EU for you, coming out very strong here in Atal Dazar. Just over 14 minutes here, Sours. They did an incredible job. New routes that we're able to see access to, and this is the team that we were really expecting to see. Yeah, that was very, very fast. We, we've never seen somebody quite move through the dungeon like this before. Um, they had a whole new approach to it, and they, you know, it really showed just like how kind of uh, caught off guard maybe Black Mamba was, because Black Mamba was going very fast as well, but Method EU was just going faster than we've ever seen anyone go before. I think that's the biggest takeaway on this one, right? Showing when a team is dedicated practicing for these specific dungeons to go up against the best. They may, they, they're not going to beat Method EU, at least they didn't on this one, but they did show Sleuth that they're here to play. They're here to play, and, and you know, it's, it's part of what we talked about with Method U throughout the entire Cups, and they still bring it to the land. Black Mama did a more traditional route, and it was very excellent done. They had one death there, one little slip up, but in the end, I mean, Method U just completely re innovated and kind of just reconstructed their oh, pools. Oh, yeah. This huge pool um, for Method U, a lot of teams have been talking about this. There's a very specific stun timing, stun timing you have to do when you're engaging these trash mobs with, along with the boss so that you can damage the boss properly with its infusion, and this giant snap on the bridge with all the dinosaurs these things are worth huge percent and being able to pull that off was very impressive and then method you on 98 percent on vocal like they were just blasting through this dungeon completely like throwing like everything to the wind this boom 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 and then bosses are dead and they're so much percent ahead of the other team it's exactly the kind of uh play that we expect out of a team of this caliber not a question here, and they definitely showed that they were ready to go on this one. I'm kind of curious when it goes to Black Mamba, because a lot of times, I think, Nagura, they're even saying, Toldegore's dungeon that they're not... not um they're not unfamiliar with, let's say. Yeah, I think they actually said that Toldegore is their best dungeon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so interesting to see what we're going to see from them. But I also talked to Method U, and they also said that was the thing their Toldegore is really fast. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the things we saw so many times, is a lot of teams had the exact same dungeons, and they're like, this is our best one. We're going to be so good on this one. And then like, we start interviewing the other teams that everybody seems to be so well-versed in this dungeon. And then so when we asked people about their, their worst dungeons, it was like almost the exact same thing every time. Um, yeah, within reason. There wasn't too much variance. I mean, there was lot of uh, worry with Siege of Boralus. We kind of already mentioned it just because it's new in the mix here and, and a bit of worry we had as well with uh, Freehold just because uh, some of the affixes are quite nasty in there so we'll get to it later. Uh, yeah, but Toldegore, Atal, these are dungeons that everybody kept quoting as this is our best dungeon. We're the best. You know, and, and the question was phrased in such a way, what is the one dungeon that you are sure you will never get beaten on? Atal <laughs> and Toldegore. <laughs> I mean, somebody's got to lose yeah. at some point. So. At that point, I mean, you could have, what, what was the closest tie that we had this hour? You know, 10 seconds, 5 seconds, something yeah, like that. Yeah, very close. I know that, like, it was two years ago. Uh, we had was fractions. Like, it was like milliseconds of a difference <laughs> between teams. So, you know, anything can happen, especially with the death timer. That 5 seconds can really add up for each death in a dungeon. can really kind of throw things um, for a loop when it comes to who wins. So, it, this was, you know, this wasn't that close. It, but they, we've seen some incredibly close runs in the past. I think that's going to be the most fascinating thing when you're looking at each region. We, we saw a lot of times where Eastern region were saying, okay, there's no way they're going to be able to stand up against the West here. But what if we're looking at different teams here in Nagura? What if we're seeing Black Mamba maybe versus Method NA, Black Mamba maybe versus 40K? It seems like, at least from just one dungeon so far, 
if they're practicing, if they're preparing properly, they can really show up. And that's what I think the Eastern region can do really well, especially Team D that we're going to see later uh, today uh, have some really good strategies in the past. We've seen, for example, Method U even copy a strategy from uh, Team D, from WakeQuest Manor with this DK, the 1 million DPS. So I think uh, there's definitely going to be some Eastern teams who can do really well. And uh, when we talk to them, even the Eastern teams themselves kind of said, yeah, the Western teams are so good and we're going to be happy to get top four. But I think they just like very humble and they can do really well. Yeah, it would be interesting to start seeing that as we're going to be taking a quick break before we go into game two. Don't go anywhere, guys. Method EU versus Black Mamba coming up on the other side of this break. Welcome back to the Mythic Dungeon International here, live from Sydney, Australia. And if you'd like to support the prize pool for the Mythic Dungeon International and Arena World Championship, be sure to check out the T-Morph Beacon and Horden Alliance fireworks, as proceeds will support the prize pool for the Global Finals at BlizzCon here. With Method EU up one against Black Mamba, Sloot, we got to be looking at if it was really worth Black Mamba practicing solely, as they mentioned in their interview, just to be able to try try to take down Method EU here. I, I mean, look, if your mentality in this tournament is I want to win, then you have to practice to beat the best team. That's just the way it goes. But I mean, that's a tall order. We just saw how dominant Method EU was. But the thing with Method EU is, you know, when we talk to them, they, they know that they're not indestructible and they believe that they're actually at an, a bit of a disadvantage uh, compared to the other teams because the other teams have had so much practice time now. They've had time to come in, they have time to copy strats, refine strats, practice, practice. Don't worry about time trials, no cups, nothing. So they're a bit worried in that sense. And you know, Black Mom is, uh, I mean, they they said Toldegor is their best map, so we know Method EU can drop games. We've seen them drop games in the season, and if you're trying to win this tournament, you have to practice to beat the best, and Method EU was the best. Without a question here. Now we're going to be throwing it over to our sideline reporter, Thist, for the inside scoop on both teams. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for that. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to listen in on both teams. Black Mamba, interestingly enough, weren't actually playing the... Uh, the meta classes beforehand. So what they did was they went on Twitch and watched the Western teams and sort of studied what they were doing. That being said, they think that a lot of the teams in the MDI are a little too extreme and you never go full extreme. But speaking of Twitch chat, Black Mamba actually met their members through Twitch chat, thus proving that you can meet your MDI team potentially anywhere. And over to Method EU, they have a really great mentality when it comes to making mistakes. If someone messes up during a run, they don't waste time getting tilted. They don't waste time flaming each other. Uh, they, they think it's funny. They actually turn it into a meme. When Method EU makes some mistakes, they rally together and they figure out how to fix it rather than making it worse by getting tilt. Uh, and I think that's something that we could all probably learn from, especially you, Jack. Back to the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling no punches oh on that God. one. Thank you so much, Fist. I think, uh, you know, maybe if, if Sloot wouldn't let me get aggro by mobs all the time, I, I might have scaled down the tilt just a little bit. I mean, well, you know, Jack, when we call that we're going to mass stealth through something and you just run before the rogue's even ready and, <laughs> and pull the trash with your face, then that's your problem, not mine. One heal? <laughs> <laughs> one tank here, please? <laughs> but as we've been talking about Toldegore and l looking at that one going forward, Nagura, you kind of had an interesting talk with Method EU on this one. They're very confident, not only in everything they do, but especially for <laughs> Toldegore. Yeah, so uh, they talked to me about Toldegore now. Uh, in the cups for the Western teams, it always was tyrannical, and now we have 45. And we all know in Toldegore, it works a little bit differently than all the other dungeons because you have the cannons, and the cannons just deal with the trash for you. So uh, with 45, you can do this dungeon very quickly. And they told me, Maris told me that their fastest run in Toldegore is actually 11 minutes. So we'll see if they can... Uh, actually do this time, 11 minutes. I'm ready to see it here as we go on to game <laughs> two with a staggering poll result here. 95% for Method EU as we're going into game two on Toldegore. Jack, you backspace that hashtag Method EU out of your phone right now. <laughs> as we head into Toldegore right now, both teams right out the get-go getting over to the Sand Queen, the first boss of the dungeon, which you do need to kill, of course, in order to access the floors of the prison. Sand Queen going in right now. Bloodlust has been pulled, uh, popped here for Method EU. Now, the only the only kind of detrimental affix that we have, even for the cannons, Nagur, we know, is that explosive. Yeah, so the explosive affix is something they have to deal with, of course. Now, uh, with double rope, it should not be a really big deal because ropes are just so good to dealing with them. Not only that, but they can also cleave off of the explosive, therefore not losing a lot of damage at all. Uh, from switching to them. So definitely good to have those double rope set up here. And as you mentioned, just both teams popping the Blalas here from uh, on the Sand Queen and just pulling more trash on top of it, which is something we've seen all the time in the cap play as well. 
And, you know, we have the Fortified here already making the dungeon substantially easier for the teams because of the cannons coming up that we'll see after Jess Hallis, the second boss of the dungeon. But on top of it, you have Skittish, which is just really a non-affix. Uh, it, it does decrease the tank's threat done, but threat is a multiplier based on damage done. We know how much damage the prot wares can output. Not even that, but both teams are carrying double rogue right now, so no concern. These teams should be able to absolutely fly through this dungeon right now. As Method EU has hit 40% on the Sand Queen. Black Mamba, once again, we have seen their single target DPS a bit slower than Method EU in the previous dungeon is now sitting at 45% uh, on Sand Queen. Yeah, Method EU definitely showing that they can do a lot of single target damage as the boss is uh, on the uh, second or third upheaval here and the Sand Queen is already on 28%, so about to go down. They also pulled some of the Parasites through the cage here, so just making everything a little bit faster, uh, both on 5%. Now, we've seen some teams pull a lot more trash on top of the Sand Queen here, some teams even running mages, but the Method EU and Black Mamba not doing any of that, they just uh, Kill the parasites to make sure they don't have to deal with it after the Sand Queen is dead, and then they're gonna move on. Certainly don't want those irritating you. Method EU about to down the Sand Queen here. No more upheaval phase. Of course, that upheaval goes down and does do a massive amount of nature damage onto the target. If it's the tank as well, she will melee as she comes up. So, particularly uh, saucy on the tank should they get the hit. But no problem for Method EU right now, as the rogues, of course, bust into the bottom area of the dungeon right now, grabbing the thugs, uh, double thug, of course, uh, moving up here. And we are in the teeming environment. Uh, I don't know why I mentioned Skittish earlier. Those icons, I was confused. But we are in teaming here, so there's a double thug in the bottom pack here. They move right up. They are ready to uh, mast off everything off and move past with the double sap. Of course, that true CC, as we see one last bump here from Mears with that ring of peace. Black Mamba following suit and only now running up in the dungeon, but they're taking it a bit slower. Now, Negro, on this pull, we've actually seen a lot of teams kind of pull the thugs to the side and then run up, but it seems that they're just full on heading up. Yeah, one thing to note as well here that uh, uh, here's some of the cages they can open if you're a rogue. You open the cages and you get buffs. Now, the buffs are randomly located, and you, the rogues usually only open the right side because it takes too much time to go to the left, and uh, someone might die, get aggro. So that's why it's very important uh, which buffs you get from the right side. If you get the attack power, then you're going to be so much faster because, of course, attack power is the one thing you want with those full melee setups. Now, I've talked to Marius, and he said uh, when they get the attack buff, they attack power buff they can do the 11 minutes if they don't get it they're gonna be slower so let's hope both of those teams get the good rng well you're gonna be the one to blame certainly if they don't get that 11 minutes and not method you as they do line of sight here away from those uh, uh speakers of course wanting to make sure that none of those salt blasts are hitting the tank too hard they do a fair bit of damage especially in this fortified environment fortified generally easier in this dungeon but there is a lot of damage that can go in on the tank as we see wong just dips so low right now he has so many stacks of the torch toss uh, uh, from some of the mobs here in the jail and they just stack up. No dispel available from the rest of Druid Envies as he finally does get the dispel on Wong. Wong peeks back in and starts cleaving down the targets as well. Of course, that teaming environment, I misspoke earlier, of course, we are teaming, not skittish, just has more mobs present in the dungeon. And until they get access to the cannons upstairs, which will usually be somewhere between the mid-20s to even low 40s percent, depending on the strategy, they do actually have to front deal with this trash before they get access to the cannons. Yeah, so Method EU, of course, already on Jess Howlish. They pulled the boss uh, through the cage before, so they dealt with the first trash then they pulled the boss through the cage it ran all the way around towards them they pushed him to 70 percent he went back to open the cages and while he went back they pulled the arsonist on top they just them a little bit in a corner with the vortex and then when the vortex ran, ran out they pulled the rest of it now if they kill some of those arsonists they are all going to proc the 20 percent reaping wave so they need to make sure to deal with that too but there's so much going on in the second phase of just hallow you need to interrupt the boss you need to interrupt bobby and you have the arsonist doing so much damage to your tank and then you're also going to get the reaping so this is going to be difficult for method EU even on a non-tyrannical setup yeah certainly there are two separate interrupts that you need on bobby with the vicious mauling and of course the howling fear and on jess uh, himself as well with that howling fear not to mention your constant line of sighting for any orbs that may spawn down the hall here finally comes the first reaping wave for method as they cleave it down on top of the boss jess howless now 78 percent for black mamba as they have dealt with their reaping uh, a bit more of a safer route we know they tried to kill the reaping before the stun on just howless else when the stun happens that you see here on the right side of the screen they can't accrue too many of those reaping stacks on the tank and you won't have that dispel available so it will uh, often give tanks we saw that in some of the cup plays so they're playing a bit safer but you can't play too safe against a team like method you right now who's just about to down the second boss has already dealt with their first reaping and will be ready to head upstairs in just a moment rounding as much trash as they can for the cannon 
Yeah, one thing to note as well is that the, uh, the rogues are playing Night Elves now. They used to play Dwarf in the dungeon before for damage and together a rage to remove debuffs, but now they're also playing Night Elves. Usually you don't need the Shadow Mount as a rogue because you have the Vanish, but in this dungeon specifically, there's so many things you need to get rid of either when you open the cages, when you are in the cannons, so uh, just interesting to note that both of the rogues are switching to night elves too while uh, black mamba already played night elf in the dungeon before now we're going to be in the cannon area we're going to see fragments and Gingy both uh, jumping into those cannons making sure to deal with the trash while the rest of the members are just really trying to line up sides the explosives yeah, explosives are uh, certainly going to be a bit disastrous here if they get too out of hand. Now, there's a bit of RNG with their spawn. You could have just many spawn. You could have none spawn. Depends where they spawn, how far down the hall. And you're not going to have the rogues running right into the line of fire of the cannons. So while uh, while we see, of course, Jinji dealing with one side with the cannons, now has gone in and done a mass pull in the other room, getting everything in position. And now we're going to see a lot of crowd control coming in. Of course, there's that ring of peace. We're going to see an Ursul's Vertex coming in. Both have been placed down already a bit close together. So some of the mobs are actually separated right now. We've had a bit of split between the two groups as we are getting some explosives and we do know in the cannon you're not safe from the explosives either so a lot of damage coming in right now starting to get a bit out of hand as the team decides to dip out and head over to the far cannon Jinji already present there trying to keep the rest of the mobs at bay as black bomba has down just Hallis and is heading upstairs as well yeah, so when I talked to Method U, I said, so is an explosive pretty difficult in uh, Tolagor to deal with? Because if the people are in the cannon, they can still get damaged by it, and you can't really deal with them because you don't have any range. And they just thought, you know what, it's not a problem at all. The rogues are just going to get out healed, right? Because the, the rest of the heals, the, the Windwalker monk off heals, and they do have cheat death in case something goes wrong. So they can just either or go out of the cannon and just cloak. So they're just out healing the explosive and just not killing them at all, while the rest of the members who are not rogues, they just they just line of sight them around the corner and doing well to line of sight right now a lot of the mobs on the screen right now are reaping waves so they're not going to spawn those explosives most of the dangerous trash has actually already been dealt with for method use so it was looking a bit dangerous there for a second but they managed to get hold of the situation as Jinji's now started to work on the right side now in this teaming environment they still need about high 80s ish percent before moving on past uh the third boss and getting their 100 percent before the final boss corgus in the dungeon right now method has proc their fourth wave a wave of reaping that they will use the cannon to demolish as Black Mamba is doing their own mass pull. We see you here from Wong running in, grabbing everything and line of sighting it around the corner, re getting ready to do their own work. Yeah, Method U uh, on 88% trash, so they don't have to do anything more other than the trash after this next boss, which is also going to be dealt with the cannon, so it's going to die very quickly. Now, they're a Knack Captain Valyria. Now, the bosses here we've talked about a lot before because they can be very dangerous, especially the last boss on a tyrannical setting, but this time we have 45, so the bosses really shouldn't be a big problem. Not even the last boss should, should be a big deal for those teams, and especially Valyria doesn't really do that much as long as you deal with those barrels properly. Yeah, it's looking a bit scary here for Black Mamba. We've already had Cheat Death Proc there for Shin, one of the two rogues that is in the cannon. A lot of damage coming in on him right now as they finally get their third Reaping Wave spawning. Huge pull coming in from them as well, doing whatever they can to try and catch up to Method EU right now, who is at 65%, one third of the health gone for Knight Captain Valiri here, doing well to, uh, to manipulate the barrels around the room. That's really the name of the game, and you want to make sure you pre-move the boss to the corners away from where the barrels are, else if you need to get out, which they do right now, the boss tends to chain cast a lot. So you can see Mir's just doing nothing right now in the corner just a bit of crackling jig lightning so losing a lot of damage just sitting on the outside there so uh, they need to make sure they pre-move just a bit but at this point they are well ahead of black bomba right now which is just cleaning up their fourth reaping wave they have not even yet started on this non-tyrannical boss yeah definitely a little bit of a miss movement here from the boss as both of the ropes were uh, are using their cloak of shadows to be able to just stand in the explosion and continue to damage the boss because of course all of those players have uh, our melee they've cast. Even even Saelia, the rest of Druid, needs to be in cat form to do damage. Of course, you can also cast Solar Brass, but it doesn't do as much as your cat abilities. A bit of sloppiness coming in for Black Mamba as their Windwalker Monk does go down. They immediately lose the Battle Res, which is going to have another charge available in just a few seconds here, actually. So there we go. It does take over. Method you having two of those on the board. Uh, whilst we have seen that Black Mamba needed to use once, they only have one available to them. Finally, they're running in for Knight Captain Valiri, a boss that Method EU is about to kill right now. 3% left after that. They only have 12% worth of trash with just a few Wardens and Casters left before Korg is the final boss of the dungeon. There's one Warden that they're going to grab right away along with the two priests and run right up the stairs. It looks like they're just going to either skip everything or pull everything and cannon it down. But it, it, it looks like now is waiting in the middle, so they're actually just going to deal with everything right now. Yeah, so we're 10 minutes into the
bit of dungeon. The Lalas just got back up from Method the U and it also got back up for Black Mamba. Now, of course, both of those teams do want to use the Lalas on the very last boss on Corrigus as uh, Method the U is dealing with this trash here. Now, they could just proc the Reaping and then just Shadow Melt most of the aggro off, basically, so they don't have to deal with it and then just go to the, to the boss. So they don't have to backtrack afterwards and go back to deal with the rest of it. But they are 98% now, so they have to... They probably have one more mob left somewhere that they're going to see. And now they only have the, the boss left to deal with, with their Bloodlust. And again, it's a fortified setting, so it really shouldn't be a big deal for Talia to heal this fight. Should be no problem as the team gets in the corner here as we all see typical of these strats. Now, I'm not sure if they actually killed that last Warden. There was a Warden with a sliver of health left, so that might be the remaining 2% that they need. They might have just left it low and uh, crowd controlled it on the side, moving up to the corners here. Uh, now, this fight is largely dictated by how many doubles, of course, come in the fight, how many times of explosive, how many uh, doubles or back-to-back -back explosive rounds the team does take. Uh, usually makes the healer's life quite difficult, but we are in that fortified setting right now. So even with a few doubles, especially with a healer of Zelia's caliber, it really shouldn't be too much concern. You can see him being as offensive still as possible in that cat form, moving just a bit out so that they don't clip each other, as now has his back up to the wall there. Horrible view for tanks, I can tell you, but they are just chewing through this right now. Yeah, Sally definitely playing very aggressively, as you can see, almost out DPS fragments here at the very start on the opener. So Unlucky. very, very well done by Sally. Just doing so much DPS here, 16k DPS coming out of the rest of the road. A very good job as Black Mamba just on their way uh, to actually have to. Yeah, they're on their way to the last boss here. So just one whole boss fight behind. Now, Method U. They're not, they don't have their 11 minute time, as they mentioned, is their best time, but uh, they are really fast. Nagara, I learned long ago to never believe a word you say. So, <laughs> Corgus here at 30% right now, about to fall. It would require an absolutely disastrous situation. Uh, any cannon fire, anything finishing off the team, but we are fortified. We mentioned it a million times. This boss is really the scary part of the instance, should it be on Tyrannical, but it's no problem for this team right now as they hit 20%. Yeah, Method as you mentioned, uh, they had the Warden back there, which they have, there is, there's yep. the Warden is walking very, very slowly, which actually happens to be an advantage for the team. Now, the Incap is coming in from Maris to make sure that uh, they don't have to deal with it right now. And once Corgus is dead, they can just finish up the mob, uh, proc the 100% and be done with the dungeon. Now, very well done by them to make sure that they just min-max everything so perfectly, have the Warden on this, like, sliver of HP, so they don't waste any more seconds once this boss is done. Corgus goes down. They turn around and sneeze on the Warden, ignoring the fifth wave of Reaping. And the Method EU, <laughs> as they cheer in the background, Method EU, dominant performance here, just like we saw them in season play. That's right. Standard 2-0 here for Method EU as they take the series very convincingly against Black Mamba. And it's got to be a little bit of relief as well, Salute. They come into it, they're a little bit jet lagged maybe, going in an entirely new environment, playing all next to each other go in, they play exactly like they're supposed to. Yeah, I mean, it's really impressive to see. And, you know, they outdid themselves in cup play, so they didn't stick to their route, they didn't refine them much like they told us. Most of them is what they did. And I mean, they just had really solid round play. And I'm sure Sarah's is gonna touch on this too, but, you know, hats off to Black Mama too. Black Mama didn't play badly by any means. Very clean, but very traditional routes that are just too safe against a team like Method EU. Yeah, it even kind of goes to show you just a little bit how Innovation continues and continues, continues, maybe even without, you know, a lot of class diversity, but definitely with their uh, routing. Yeah, Method EU definitely is showing that they just continue to try to improve their strategies and try to do better, which is not something we see all the time, especially if you're the number one seed and you're, you never lost a whole series against anyone else. So a lot of other teams might be like, oh, you know what, we're just going to play our, do our thing again because we were so good. But they're actually improving their strategy, which is so nice by them. Yeah, Method EU shows always great patience in how they do all their pools, setting up this huge trash pool that we've seen kind of be their like staple where they set up all their rogues and a lot of the trash outside was already dead by the time they got out there and while black mambo you know they had some struggles they had some deaths during this cannon phase that you really just you can't afford to have when you're falling behind method eu but there was this kind of gap uh created by method eu in the dungeon about 30 seconds on the first boss and then it doubled to a minute for the second boss and then like a minute and a half on the third boss and this this widening gap that method eu was creating throughout the dungeon it was just down to a better movement throughout the dungeon i feel like their boss damage in general was better overall a uh, really impressive performance for Method EU, but I don't think Black Mamba is a team to count out of the, the running yet. I think their gameplay here felt a lot stronger than I than they were um, w when they were playing in Cups. I think they could definitely do uh, do quite well this tournament, and they, you know they, their goal is to get at least fourth, and I think that they have a real shot at that here.
Oh, no question here. And, and determination has always really been a big factor for Team Sloot, where, you know, even if you get out of the tournament really early, we talked to 40K about it as well, where they had a very disappointing start to their first cup, and then they come in and then they start beating Abraki Daver, and they start really showing up in those tournament game plays. So in many ways, you got to see, like, Black Mamba go home. They have all, all of the evening and all the morning tomorrow to be able to start practicing and preparing for these next matchups. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, we mentioned it before, these teams are really looking forward to that three-day kind of format that we have here at the tournament. They're going to have a lot of time to practice, and they are the team that we kept talking about that Method EU is so worried, you know, practicing till midnight, uh, just going nuts with it, and it is a certainly much different team, Black Mamba, than we saw during cup play. So they've done really well here. I mean, they've certainly impressed me, and it just goes to show how much these teams have practiced and how ready they are. Now, the thing with determination, though, is a lot of teams' mentality during the cup play that we mentioned was very kind of passive. You know, they're playing to lose to Method EU and go in the lower bracket. They're playing to just make the land. The problem is Method EU's had this mentality from day one. We want to be the best. You know, it doesn't even matter if we make land. We want to be the best. And teams are only starting to adapt that now, so hopefully it's not too little too late for some of them. You're absolutely right on that one. And let's talk, take it over to Fist, who's here with the interview with Method EU. Hi, I'm here with Fragnance. You guys are doing so well, by the way. I mean, we all saw that coming, right? Um, so your team is generally considered the, the team to compete against. Now, does that hold, holding that position, does that give you more confidence to win? Or does that put some really unneeded pressure on you? Um, I kind of feel like we're confident in it regardless. So it's more of a, you don't want to like disappoint other people like Bounce or whatnot. That's pretty much the only thing. That's kind of like the pressure, I guess. Just just disappointing the fans. Not. That's very noble of you. Um, so are you apprehensive at all about any of the teams that you might be up against in the MDI? Mm, yeah. Actually, Team D, Abracadabra, either of those two would be kind of scary, I think. Really? Why? I think they're wild cards. They do big pulls. So just anything can happen, and you're not about that. And finally, how long did it take you to pick out your transmog? Like, what's your inspiration today? We want to know. It's actually something I've had for, like, about two years. I like the red touch, so it's kind of like the dress, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, that, like, kind of Horde-inspired. Yeah, I feel that. And back to you, Jack, at the desk. I love being able to know what Fragnus is wearing today. We always <laughs> got to be able to keep up with the fashion. Although I was incredibly disappointed by now using a Disc Priest staff from PvP's Artifact as a warrior there, Sloop. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw that too. I'm going to have to talk with Robin later about that. I mean, that was just unacceptable. But, you know, the, the thing that we all kind of like looked around the desk when, uh, when Jimmy was speaking there and saying, you know, what teams are threats, no name drop on Method NA. Bit of, uh, bit of brown nose. <laughs> yeah. I can see that as well, but if we take a look at the bracket here, it's more because Method NA isn't as close to them as possible on the brackets here. 